Hello everyone. In the previous videos we have looked on how we can identify the parameters of linear and nonlinear models, for example here from the simple pendulum. However, in all of these application examples which we have investigated so far, we have always considered that we know the initial state of our system and we had basically just looked on the unknown parameters like here in our parameter vector for the inverted pendulum. However, in many real-world applications you might not be 100% sure about the initial state, especially in these cases where you're not able to measure the states directly. So in these cases where the state is only indirectly observed or only parts of the state can be directly measured, we need to also add an estimation approach to this initial state to our data-driven optimization problem for finding the best suitable model fit to our given data. However, due to the uh, optimization-based approach, we can do this quite easily by just basically adding as an additional um, argument to our minimization the initial state basically as a free optimization variable uh, and therefore trying to not only adapt the parameters here on the right hand side of f but also to adapt x0 so the initial starting state itself okay and that's basically a straightforward extension of what we have uh, previously did and in this video i would just briefly talk about how we can get not only the friction parameter b of the inverted pendulum approach but also how we can get x0 if that initial state is unknown to us due to missing measurements, for example. So let's do this on a practical basis by just going through some code. Um, this code is basically heavily relying on the previous examples on the um, pendulum model. So that's why I would basically just briefly go over it. And the important part is then how we actually optimize or define our optimization problem. So um, you should remember this code snippet from the previous video where we have basically made our cost function. This cost function was subject to an ODE problem. So this problem definition what we have right here is basically the problem definition of the ODE part here of the cost function and then we basically just get this classical squared loss of the estimated and the true ground truth data in this uh, cost function as shown here on the right hand side. And now what we basically need to do um, to also estimate the initial state considering that this initial state is unknown to us in the real world in the data, what we basically just need to do is we need to extend this parameter vector w and what we do is we define w as the initial state x0 and the additional parameter b which we are not aware of. Okay, so we basically extend our parameter vector and add the initial state to that vector. So that's why we see here that the first two elements of this parameter vector w are assigned to u0 which in the Julia nomenclature is basically the initial state of the ODE solver. A little bit different here from our notation but this u0 is this x0 here, the initial state. However we have to follow the nomenclature of Julia here uh, to avoid programming errors. And this w12 is basically the initial state. Why do we need two states here? Because we have a state with um, theta and theta dot, so that's why we need basically two scalars in order to describe the initial state. And then the third and last element of the parameter vector, this is describing our unknown uh, b, which is here the parameter or the free parameter of our inverted pendulum train model as we have also utilized it in the previous video. And that's basically already all the magic and we can then rerun this uh, because due to the implementation of, of Julia we can uh, underlyingly form this computational graph and this computational graph can then also calculate the gradients with respect to the unknown initialization of the ODE solver and based on that can apply the according optimization solvers in order to get not only B but also X0. So what we do with this mildly modified cost function, so really not a big deal here, just a small minor change. 
we basically just go through the um, optimization procedure again as in the previous video. So here we use the Newton solver. And on this step also the only additional thing which we need to consider is that this array which we have formed here, that this is basically now incorporating also an initial guess of x0 and b. And for the sake of simplicity, what we assume here is that the initial state of our system would be just the origin. However, uh, we assume, of course, that the pendulum has some initial, let's say, angle displacement, and then we just let it free in order to see some dynamic response of the system. So this would be the trivial initial guess here. Of course, it's a wrong initial guess, but this also showcases that we do not really need to have any pre-knowledge in this specific task. Then we let the Newton solver run, again here with the auto diff in the forward mode, because we can basically directly uh, propagate the gradient through the cost function and the ODE solver itself. And as we can see here, obviously, the optimization run was successful. And if we look at the outcome of that um, optimization, which we can find here, so where we basically print the found initial condition and the friction parameter, we can basically see that still, although we have extended our optimization problem in contrast to the previous task, that this is still quite accurate. So the initial condition was, except for some numerical error, um, some yeah, uncertainty regarding, not uncertainty, but uh, error regarding the sensitivity of the, of the optimization solver, we have been able to also retrieve this initial condition completely without any additional pre-knowledge and also the friction parameter, as we can see here, is still identified quite well. And if we plot the result as previously, we can basically see that the PEM model, so our fiddled model, versus the noisy ground truth data is still very accurate. And that, as we can see here, at t being zero, obviously the initial condition for which we solve this ODE using the Julia inbuilt ODE solvers are still very accurate. So I hope that this little extension of our previous PEM methods for an unknown initial state gave you also some insights and the important use case is here if you do not have direct accesses to the state, to the initial state in data-driven system identification applications. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.